well. It is Sunday the 7th of November. I have no idea where time is going. It is just flying and I've been joined by Daisy today. Um, so what I thought I would do is I'm going to combine this video so it's going to be a, a stitch with me. So I have promised and promised and promised people um, that I would do a stitch with me on my Chatelaine piece. So <laughs> it's not come out for a long, long time and it's, it's one of those pieces where, I don't know, I really enjoy it when I'm working on it, but I have to really concentrate, you know, because of the nature of what these pieces are. They're not simple cross stitch, obviously, there's a lot of speciality stitches in them. So if you don't know what this uh, Chatelaine piece is, I'll put in a picture for you of the one I'm working on. So this is the Royal Tudor Mandala or Mandala, depending on you how you pronounce it. Um, I love anything to do with Tudor history here in the UK, so this is just the perfect um, chatelaine for me to, to start with. So I will get that out in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a bit of an update on the bike ride that we finished in September, and as you can see, I'm here, I survived. I survived, didn't I? Um, just. Um, so I have got some footage for you. Um, there wasn't a lot that I could film, actually, which was a bit strange during the, the ride itself, because... It was just relentless. There wasn't really an opportunity for re me really to capture that much. So a lot of the, the vlogging I've done, apart from the first day where I have managed to pick up little bits for you, is sort of me giving sort of my um, thoughts of the day um, at the end of each day. So I hope I hope you enjoy it anyway. It'll give you a sense of, of what we achieved. And then one of the coaches had an absolutely amazing singing voice. So on the last night, on the celebration night, he sang to us all. So obviously I've got some footage of him and I've sort of overlaid that with some of the photos from the ride itself. So I hope you like that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna insert that first. And if you don't wanna watch that, obviously you can skip along to the, um, to the actual stitch with me. But I just wanted to also, whilst I was here, and most importantly was to take the opportunity to thank you so much for all the support you gave me um, during the run-up to the ride itself and, and that's on a sort of a personal level cheering me on sending me messages emailing me and also for the fundraising and obviously the support you showed there so from Etsy sales and I haven't included people who went directly to the, the fundraiser site and sponsored me straight off the bat because many of you did and many of you then actually then bought pieces off me which was amazing but just from Etsy sales alone I raised £1,550 from the things that I sold so I, I can't believe how much I managed to sell through the Etsy store and as you know every single penny that went through the system went into the fundraising pot so obviously you know that Etsy if you do sell on Etsy take charges the charge of that and stuff I didn't take any of that out I literally put every penny in and obviously I sent everything free delivery so I have had some questions about whether or not I'm going to start the Etsy stop, uh, shop back up and, and put some of the pieces back on and I will I'll definitely do that but I, I closed the store down just because I wanted that separation from the fundraising and then opening it back up because obviously there's the history of videos that are here and, and what I didn't want people to do was go on order things and expect um, free delivery moving forward so I will open that back up I will sell the scissor fobs and obviously needle minders and such like again but Obviously, I will have to charge delivery again. So, um, so thank you massively, massively so much. And as you know, the organisation doubled everything that we raised. So I more than achieved my 2,700 um, target. And obviously, the company doubled that. So, so as a collective, we managed to raise um, over £53,000. And obviously BMS doubled that for us. So we were able to present Maggie's with a cheque of £106,000, um, which is amazing considering the absolutely fantastic work that they do. So I just wanted to say first and foremost, just thank you so much for all of your support, your kind words, 
um, ordering stuff from the Etsy store. I really hope you liked it. The comments on the Etsy store and what you put in the comments box on previous uploads suggest you did. So <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad everything went down well. And um, so what I'll do now whilst I get myself organized and set up for the Stitch With Me is I'll put in the footage that I took on the ride. And if you don't want to watch that, I'll timestamp it in the comments box below so you can skip and just watch the stitch with me if you choose to so um i hope you enjoy it um there's a lot of me whinging <laughs> it's so hard enjoy hello everyone it's friday the 17th and i am in chester uh ready to start the first leg of the ride um oh my goodness it there's just not been an opportunity to film anything really today but i'm in my room now and it's it's half eight, so this is how early we've been pretty much sent off to bed. We were, um, <laughs> the uh, coaches started to leave at about the dinner at about eight o'clock and we're like, right, okay, see you in the morning, pedal, pedal, pedal. So we thought we'd better um, follow suit and, and do exactly the same as well. So I'm in my room now. I'm just getting myself organized and packed. I've got like a little day sack and things, which I'll show you in the morning too. Um, to pack and just get organised with some bits and pieces that we might need for the ride. But oh my God, it's been such an emotional day meeting everybody and seeing everybody who have been, that we've been training to get, well, we haven't trained together, but we've been connected together through training for the last 18 months. And to see these people actually in the flesh has just been unbelievable. And to meet the coaches and my bike's been checked over, so it's had a mechanic overhaul and Oh my goodness, Ugh, I, I just, I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is. So we've just had some dinner together. So I, I kind of ate as much carbs as I could. So I've eaten a massive, great big bowl of, bowl of pasta and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to have a really early night. Uh, but gosh, yeah, we've met all of the team today. Just, oh my goodness, like the, we, we were out in the garden. Honestly, I feel like I'm rambling because I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been like it all day, honestly. I've been like running on nervous energy because I'm just so excited. Um, we had drinks in like this really nice garden area and then like the whole support group were there to introduce themselves to us. And, oh, you know, when you just look at this line of people sort of stood there in front of us and they're there to support us. It was just so, oh, kind of moving and touching. There was, so we've got two paramedics We've got um, the people who do all of the food and the van and, and kind of they have the van with all the food in it and they sort of set up the food stations for us. We've got um, the guys who drive the vans with the mechanics in it who follow us. So they were there to introduce us, plus the mechanics and then the coaches and just seeing everybody there and all excited and keen for us to do this. Oh, it just it just bent my mind and then all of us together who were gonna ride. Oh, just just a truly amazing experience. And then we've been split into two groups. So I've been put with the fast riders. <laughs> so so that's a good sign, I'd say. Um so they've obviously got faith in me that I will do well. So I'm leaving at nine in the morning from here. The first group go at half eight and then we leave half an hour later with a view to probably catching them up towards the back end of the ride as well. Um, and we'll probably have lunch with them, I would imagine, or something like that. Or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base at some point during the day and then they'll set off and we'll go. Um, so they should always be finishing at similar times, I would say, if they've gone half an hour earlier. But yeah, it's just, just nice. So I'm just going to get myself organized now and then um yeah I'll, I'll keep putting pictures in as i'm talking um to you and then hopefully i'll get a bit of footage tomorrow if it's not too mad and crazy um show you a little bit of the setup at least anyway i mean people are, are being quite sort of snap happy happy with the cameras anyway so it's nobody's going to really mind it's just obviously talking to you guys over the video will be a bit strange to people because I can't imagine they see that many do this but yeah just I can't actually believe I'm here I really can't um anyway I'm gonna go I'm gonna have a really early night um yeah I'll catch you in the morning nice and early
Good morning everyone! It's Saturday morning and we're about to go. It is almost eight o'clock. We've had breakfast. So I'm just going to show you um, my kind of organisation before I head down and hand my bags over. So I'm in my kit. I'm all ready. Um, I'm just going to put my wind vest on in a moment. I just need to put my cycling shoes on and gather everything up. But yeah, I've got yeah all of that on. And um, yeah, here's my little day sack. So I've got all sorts of stuff in. I've got waterproofs and um, I will have, you know, look, chamois cream. And um, I've got my, uh, what you would call it, electrolyte tablets as well. I'll put my glasses in there. Um, just glasses, gloves, bike computer shoes and helmets are down there. And then the uh, case is just about ready packed to go. I did bring my... Um, super duper neck massager so I hope that stays with the suitcase I'll just have to make sure that they pack that well so I'm gonna get organized and uh, yeah get my bike checked bag checked and I'll see you in a minute yeah so once we've um, checked the bags in we essentially head over to a station where they've got water bottles and a snack station and just grab what we want and just put it in our back pockets if we want anything extra and then we have our first stop I think it's about 25k in. I think guys The tire oh, the same. I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points. You can run over fingers. morning <laughs> i am as knackered as i look um it's just so you know oh my goodness um it's now sunday morning it's what is it quarter to seven we're just about to go down for breakfast to leave at eight. <sighs> oh my goodness yesterday was i'm trying to think of a word to describe it and i don't want to say horrific but i'm going with horrific um absolutely unbelievably like like nothing I could have expected and, and you know I'm kind of like I've trained and I've trained really hard but like nothing nothing could have prepared me for that it was just climb after climb after climb and you like you get round a, a bend and there'd be another one presenting itself to you um oh gosh yeah and, and obviously it's so emotional because obviously i'm remembering why i'm here 
and um oh my god that that sort of really gets you um really really tough like mentally tough so yeah i mean i didn't sleep particularly well last night again um i'm just desperate for a really good night's sleep um but yeah it's uh it's quite something and obviously it's so full on like literally i, I can barely get any footage i can barely get any pictures because we just literally like off and on and like we we don't even really get like many breaks i mean because it's in the uk they've like gone for broke with the routes and even like the instructors were like like yesterday's route was a really technical route we were on really narrow paths with lots of gravel and grit um like hairpin bends really really crazy descents like long descents um crazy climbs and they were saying like there was no respite there was like no flat bits like there wasn't a flat bit uh, I had 10 minutes where we were sort of up and down undulating through fields which was really nice um where previously when they do the Paris to London the Paris area is pretty flat so you, you've got like it's pretty flat and then the worst bit for them was they're running around the Dover area where this is just like day after day of climbing and I don't want to whinge um but I I was under the impression like really under the impression from previous riders that there were lots of pit stops there weren't yesterday like w one point I'd, I'd finished the climb and I went to get my water bottle out of my holder and they were like come on and let's go and I'm like I haven't even had a drink um and it's not that they're not looking after us it's just that the routes are tough and it took us longer than they were thinking um and by the time we got back to the hotel last night it was starting to like twilight was coming um and they wanted us back to the hotel so obviously they wanted us to press on but oh gosh yeah um and just the thought of getting back on the bike today i'm just like oh <laughs> Anyway, I was in the most amazing room last night. I'm going to give you a quick tour before I go down to breakfast and start again. So hang fire and I'll come with you. So you have my front door here. And then uh, we come round to like, there's like this hallway. So I've got this really nice lamp in the corner. <clears throat> and then you come down and you've got three doors in front of you. It's been great, but honestly, I keep leaving things in different rooms and I'm backwards and forwards through these doors. So to the left, you have my bathrooms are pretty much got packed and got everything out so you know the usual essentials bath and shower i was so looking forward to a bath last night I didn't even get a chance like i dried the sweat into my hair when i got in and curled my hair that's what i had to do so this is the bedroom area so case kit i need to put on in a bit my day bag with it's gonna to rain today so we've got all our rain jackets and overshoes and stuff because it is going to rain um yeah i haven't even had a chance i brought my back massager a neck massager i haven't even had a chance to use it um so yeah that's the bedroom and then this is amazing i haven't even really been in here because i've not actually had any chance but i've got like a lounge area how amazing is that so Two leather sofas, this great big, I have been in to make a coffee and I uh, dried my hair here last night, dried the sweat in, because um, I never had time to wash my hair. This is how full on it's been. And then look at this, look at that. The most spectacular view of like Conway Bay. Um, it's just lovely. This is the first time I've ever had a chance to see it. Um, oh, there's a castle in the distance. Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to see though. It's sort of just there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, you can't really see. It's not light enough. Maybe I'll be able to get a shot when I, oh, maybe just, you can just see the turrets like sort of there. Stop pointing. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. I forgot to say yesterday there was nearly 6,000 feet of climbing. I'll put the Strava, Strava segment in for you. Um, today we have got 1,600 metres of climbing and tomorrow we've got 1,800. So there's slightly less <laughs> climbing today. Hello, you guys. It's Sunday night. I am in Carnarvon. So I've just had dinner. It is quarter to 11. So, oh gosh, I look shattered. So I am... 
actually just in the process of getting ready to for bed and getting in um be up again at six it's the last day tomorrow so today we yeah what did we climb today i want to say uh 1600 meters today there was a monster climb I, i'll put the sort of i'll put the strava, strava segment and i'll sort of put the route guided route in for you just now so you can see exactly what we did um they did call it um the climb from hell they weren't kidding i mean we've gone up like 23 percent gradients on um the uh on, on 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 today's route some of these climbs have just been obscene and they're just they just go on and on and i'm just oh we were just talking about how much training we've all done and, and still it's like nowhere near enough it's just bizarre and, and it's just been so busy i've barely been able to get any pictures or anything at all we're just like full on like the breaks are so intense you just want to get as much food into you as you possibly can and water i mean that that's so key in electrolytes just to just to help you out um and then yeah lunch was it's just like a mad feeding frenzy like literally just trying to get as much food into yourself as you can before we move on so today we got in fact both days pretty much we've been lucky with the weather yesterday was kind of a bit overcast it did rain at one point and unfortunately yesterday it rained before we did this crazy descent um and it was kind of through a leafy sort of pathway, but a lot of the leaves had fallen off the trees previously because it's obviously autumn now, and it was just a really slippy, nasty mess yesterday. So that was the weather then. This morning, um, it chucked it down for a little while. So we got out and then it started to rain on one of the before as we just started the really long climb. And then lo and behold, the sun came out and we've had glorious sunshine this afternoon. So all of our leg warmers, um, rain jackets, everything came off this afternoon. So it was truly beautiful riding around. And I'll put some pictures in of the scenery. Not that I've had very much chance to really appreciate it because you are so focused on the route and the road ahead and the people who are in front of you. Because obviously we're riding in a group. You've got to be so careful about the spacing and the horrible climbs that I've not really had chance to savour the area and it is just stunning. So tomorrow um, it's the worst day. Um, the same distance as we've done the last two days and then it's 1800 metres of climbing and we've got two really nasty sections tomorrow. So I'm just going to like really dig deep tomorrow and just sort of power myself through it, smashing a load of gels. Um, you can get these like isotonic gels. All the guys have been on them. I haven't really bothered with them that much because on my last route, on my last training, um, I had a bit of a, I have taken gels before, but I had a bit of a moment with one where it just sort of went to my head and I didn't feel very well with it. But I'm just gonna smash a few in tomorrow <laughs> to get me up the hills, dig deep and tomorrow night we have a lovely evening out in in chester as a group as our last celebration night but like today's ride i was with um another group because obviously as captain i can change group and it was good to do it the the group i was with yesterday were very intense like eager to go eager to press where this group we've had just jokes, a laugh. It's been just nice to be with people who, yes, they want to do it and they're determined to do it and we all do it, but the pressure's off and you can just relax. Um, so same group again tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's been really emotional. Um, I think probably the most emotional time of my life, really, just achieving certain things and and not like for example today we were climbing up this horrific hill and i will have shown you the segment so you can see how long we've been climbing for an hour i think at that point and you know the guys have said get to the van get to the van at the top the tops at the van and i could see our iconic van ahead of me and i just thought just get to the van get to the van and then they were playing and pumping out this really loud music from the back of it. And I went, I was just thinking to myself, this is a bit weird. This is a bit weird. And then as I got to the van, they were like, come on, come on. You're three quarters of the way there. And I was just like, 
I unclipped at that point and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like the guys told me that this was the top and I was so upset and disappointed that it wasn't the top. You know, when you just like have a bit of a moment and you can't quite catch your breath and you, you crying in a way. And I was just thinking, I like I would, if I'd have known there was more and you'd have told me there was more, I'd have just kept going. I would have like thought in my head, but I just figured that was it. And it wasn't, um, but oh my goodness, like what two days, what two days. And I didn't sleep very well last night. So I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping that I get a good night tonight. So I'm going to go and um, like literally, oh, I'm so sorry. I literally get ready for bed and in and a little bit organized for tomorrow and final stretch, worst day to finish on, which is terrible when we're already shattered, but last day tomorrow, last push. It's done. <laughs> but I will no doubt check in with you at some point tomorrow. See you later. Hey guys, it is midnight <laughs> on uh, Monday. Um, it's it's all done. I have just got in. Oh God, honestly, I can't move my legs. Oh my God, I had the severest of cramps um, today and oh gosh, they had to literally pick me up off the floor and lift me <laughs> today my legs had just gone into a total spasm but oh my days um yeah we'll uh sort of again put the the segment routes in but we climbed penny pass um if any of you know it oh my goodness it's it was four kilometers of of just climbing it was um massive terrain feature <laughs> we've been calling all of the hills it's a terrain feature this was a massive terrain feature um oh we just battered I'm, i i don't think i've ever been as exhausted in my life i'm absolutely battered my legs won't move i i cramped um before lunch today i I've never known cramp so bad in like my entire leg. Like I've had like calf cramp before. I sometimes get it in the night, but I've had calf cramp before. Um, but my whole legs went. Um, and then and the paramedic and, and the guy who was driving the van just like literally just scooped me off the pavement and put me in the back of the van and drove me to the lunch stop, which was about um, like five minutes from where I'd literally like my legs had gone. And uh, yeah, a bit of lunch perked me up, but oh, I, I don't know how I've done it. I honestly don't know how I've done it. We were just chatting about the route and I mean, Epic is like, I can't even describe it. I mean, I will put loads of pictures in um, to show you and I might be doing that while I'm, I'm talking. I don't know yet how I'll edit it, but oh my days, um, like the scenery has been awesome. But I've had my head down, really focusing on the on doing it that you don't even get to really appreciate where you are, and it's and it's a real shame. But the guys were saying that the traditional Paris to London route, which they usually ride, is like nowhere near what we've achieved, nowhere near what we've done. And um, yeah, would I do it again? yeah I, I would but I'm not going to do it soon if I'm if I'm still here with BMS and I hope I am um maybe in sort of three or four years and give somebody else a go at the experience I don't want to apply and take that away from somebody else but oh gosh so we've been for dinner um one of our coaches Martin he not only cycles and does a lot of things he sings and he does oh god all sorts of circus tricks and and stuff like that and i'll i'll put in a couple of things of of him singing and walking down the stairs on his hands essentially <laughs>
Cause I have been told That salvation Let's their wings on fall So when I'm lying in my bed Thoughts running through my head And I feel that love is dead I'm loving angels instead And through it all I have to see the section A lot of love and affection Whether I'm right or wrong And down the waterfall Wherever it may take me I know that life won't break me When I come to call she won't forsake me I'm loving angels instead When I'm feeling weak And my pain walks down A one-way street I look above And I know I will always be blessed with love And as the feeling grows <laughs> She breaks flesh to my bones And when love is dead I'm loving angels instead And through it all She offers me protection A lot of love and affection whether I'm right or wrong And down the waterfall Wherever it may take me I know that life won't break me When I come to call She won't forsake me I'm loving angels instead There's one more. Yeah. One more, one more to go. And through it all, oh, she has to be protection, a lot of love and affection, whether I'm right or wrong, and down the waterfall, wherever it may take me, I know the life won't break me, when I come to she won't forsake me. I'm loving angels instead. just just phenomenal i've met the most amazing guys just amazing like everybody has just been fantastic from the support team you know the paramedics the van drivers the people who've done the food um the coaches oh my god like 
just 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 phenomenal just phenomenal it's been probably one of the best experiences of my life but I'm battered and I'm going to go to bed and I'll probably tell you a little bit more about it as I continue stitching so I'm sorry I haven't been able to get you any footage really we have just been like it's been like military fashion um I did um throw up my breakfast this morning <laughs> which was not helpful and it's why I cramped um <clears throat> so we had like breakfast was at seven so we all went down and had breakfast together at seven and then we were leaving at eight o'clock on the dot so obviously we had breakfast we then had to come to the rooms to get our bags take them to um the place where the bikes were held um get together you know get our day bags all of that stuff onto the van so I didn't get time so I left breakfast about 20 to 8 in like I don't usually eat a lot for breakfast anyway but I was trying to get some food in to fuel myself because the start of the ride was nasty and um, we started to head out and instantly we were hit with a climb it was like a massive climb it was a a significant terrain feature so I got up pretty much most of it and then like my breakfast was sitting really heavy but it was like there it wasn't down and then before I knew it I was off the bike and heaving into the hedge which was really unhelpful because then I was empty and dehydrated as well because obviously everything I'd had had come up not that you want to know that it's probably graphic TMI Lisa anyway um I then gets back on the bike and this would be like 20 past eight in the morning I'd done that by and um yeah 20 past eight and then lunch was uh, about 20 to two quick stop to try and, and get something in and the stop was that short it was almost a case of well do I go to the loo or do I eat something so I had to go to the loo managed to get a quick um bar in and try and have a few sips of water and then we're off again up Penny Pass which I did actually climb really well um but then yeah so obviously by lunchtime completely empty reserves gone like probably um electrolyte deficient as well and that's why I cramped so you know one of them isn't it it was just yeah it was really tough <laughs> oh anyway I can see the the whatsapp chat chat everybody's loading their pictures on from today so I'm gonna have so much to show you um of the experience so yeah you take care guys I'll catch you in a bit so here we are I hope you enjoyed that um yeah it was one of those events where oh, there are times in your life where you're praying for something to be over and then on reflection like you wish you could do it all again and just enjoy it a lot more but it was an amazing experience and um you know it, it's just been great to take you on the journey with me so that being said here is the chatelaine and and where i am at the moment so i'm going to be sort of working over here i think <clears throat> i have no idea where i finished up as i said it's been that long since this has seen the light of day it's been wrapped in pillowcases in my craft room and i'm hoping the light's going to be good enough <clears throat> it's one of those funny days today where you know what the autumn light is like it's sort of light but not it's it, it's funny light it's really diffused isn't it so i'm hoping that you'll be able to see enough of it so um yeah i am going to be working in and around this area so i can see here i've finished up with the green and the white and it makes sense for me to finish that element of it there's a lot of algerian eyelets in here i'm not going to do the speciality stitches on camera i have done before but um i'm not going to do today in the interest of time probably what i'm going to do is just pick up um some of the other shades and just really keep it to cross stitch just because i just need to get my eye back in it and then what i'll do in the new year is come back on and probably do some of the other speciality stitches with you and i can see what i've done here is i've finished this section but i haven't beaded down here so i think my thought process at the time was let me put the basic cross stitch in and then i'll come back and bead the, the segments in 
as a collective because obviously I'm swapping and changing beads there's lots of different color beads in this so I think that's probably where I was going with my head and it makes sense um I'm acutely aware I've got to stitch another four of these Tudor roses they were her that was horrific it's it's a tiny tiny element but it was horrible to stitch it was just horrible <laughs> I don't know what it was about it but obviously I've got another another three so I'm going to have to break that up a little bit to um to lessen the burden so probably what I think I will do is work on this part um whilst it's out and I, and I will do a bit more work on this over the next couple of weeks and then I'll stitch the Tudor rose that sits down the bottom here but this is where it is I mean obviously it's like all things beaded you're not going to be able to see how gorgeous it looks in real life I'm sure if I do this it won't even make any difference I mean this like heliotrope bead in the middle is just gorgeous but obviously you probably won't even be able to see it but I'm going to zoom in position myself up and then we'll we'll start on this section here do you know what I've just realized <laughs> as I started this the reason why I'd got a little bit frustrated with it and I have actually not counted correctly and what I'm going to have to do I don't quite know what's happened but as I've gone to put this stitch in here there should be three white cross stitches there and I'm clearly one out to the right on this so I've miscounted at some point on this section here so I know this is correct because I've just checked it but something has thrown off the pattern here and I need to go back and work out quite where I've gone wrong because I can't see it immediately it's not becoming that obvious right now so with that in mind what I'm going to do is let me zoom you back out I'm gonna jump down here to this piece and do the equivalent of that now I think that's why I'd um, put this away so let me just check everything's okay before I move down here and then I'll get the um, the colors out for the equivalent to that section right I've got myself a little more organized so I can see a couple of things that are not quite right <laughs> that, that will require work it's it's no big drama it's quite easy to sort out but I, I i've sort of reassessed um what i've been doing and i've also made a little tiny bit of a bodge here as well um because i need to fit um i think it's a dens road stitch in here and i hadn't left enough space I've, I've also miscounted here these are incredibly complex patterns i mean it is it shouldn't be but honestly it's pickled my brain so i am going to come down here i've just cross-referenced all of the counting and i know i'm about to place it in the right place and i'm not off anywhere else other than this little section here so I'm going to come in and um, I'm going to be working in the Gloriana silk thread. This is Winterbrook. Uh, you can see the variegation on that. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to get my floss ready. Obviously, it's, I'm stitching two over two. So I just need to make sure I've got everything lined up correctly. And, and they always recommend, especially when you're working with variegated threads, to separate the two strands and then put them back together so everything lays nicely. Um, so you get that proper variegated effect. So everything side by side, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get my needle set up and then I'll come back and then I'm going to quite literally do the edging of this section and and really until I get my eye back in I'm probably not going to do a whole lot more because I don't want to fudge it again because I clearly fudged it twice um anyway I will be right back right we're off so here we are Gloriana Winterbrook and uh yeah hopefully you can see some of the variegations it goes from like his lovely brown green to like uh aquamarine it's really nice um, so I was going to say for for those of you who are interested in maybe working on a chatelaine and I, and I would recommend it despite the couple of glitches that I've had it's just beginner's error really because this is so different to anything that I've ever tried before so you know I am going to forgive myself my um, couple of mistakes 
and um, go back and amend and deal with it accordingly. Um, but I uh, uploaded a, a video when I first got the pack um, with all of the, oh my god, honestly, so many specialist flosses and threads. I mean, you can see just in this section alone how much other stuff, so there's so much beading, so much um, kind of uh, metallics, or oh, just variegated threads as Gloriana, silks, you name it, the water lilies, there's so much within this. So I did a sort of unpacking the kit video. So I'll insert that for you now. And then I also came on and when I first started the whole piece, kind of the center section, I did quite a bit on a, on a stitch with me. So I'll put that in as well so you can have a look um, I'll put it below and I'll, I'll try and add it into the, um, the section at the end and um, just give you a bit of a feel for what came in this kit and the different variety of stuff that's available to, to stitch with. So yeah, absolutely amazing. And I must admit getting this back out at this point, having not seen it for ages, um, I'm going to do quite a few nights on this I think this week. So now it's out. I think it's going to stay out for quite a bit and I'm going to I'm going to do quite a bit of work for the probably the rest of the week on it and, and see what I can do and how far I can get obviously go and correct the fudges and um, and see and see what it looks like but yeah so for the next three weeks I am sort of free to stitch and do stuff because Tony's gone back to the Middle East if you're watching hello gorgeous um he found me <laughs> he found me um i don't think it was that hard to find me on on youtube honestly i was quite i was quite mortified to be honest that he had um but obviously he knows i do all of this stuff and and i think it, the the run-up and the training for the bike ride had also interested interested him as well so um yeah he, he's found me so he may he may watch um he better have subscribed um, let me just count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we should have 12 of these when I'm done. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, I need another couple. And then I will count again because, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? If you don't keep checking. So, yeah, I, I, he came round and he was like, oh, yeah, I've, I've spent the afternoon with you. And I'm like, well, you didn't because I was at work. And he was like, oh, yeah, crafty Lisa found your YouTube channel so oh god honestly it was a really cringe moment <laughs> he's gone back and watched some of the really early ones as well which is even more cringe but three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so at least you know I suppose he does he does know what I do and how I entertain myself when he's not here um six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right so that should be on the first of the white Yes, it all lines up, which is always a bonus, isn't it? So yeah, he, he knows exactly what I'm up to um, <clears throat> when he's away mostly. So for the next few weeks, he's back on the 3rd of December. So for the next few weeks, I've got a couple of bits and pieces to crack on with. So I'm starting the Christmas cakes later today. Um, so I'm going to get my fruit prepared and organised. And I know you know... Um, from videos in the past, I, I do make my own Christmas cakes. So yeah, I'm gonna get my fruit soaked and then bake them during the week and get them all ready. I'm a bit later than I wanted to be with them, to be honest, but um, you know, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? When, when Tony is home, I wanna spend time with him as much as we possibly can, because time's limited and then he's back to work and leave isn't very long, so that's that's the nature of the beast I guess so so yeah let me just uh, see how far down I am one two three four five six one two three four five six one more this is a problem with um doing chatelaines as stitch with me I think is all you're gonna hear me do is count three four five six seven all right now we're into like a half stitch so let me just work that in a half stitch there 
and then we are like a quarter stitch here which should be about there mm, yeah just want to make sure I don't <coughs> mess this section up and then that would be, no, you see, I would have done that wrong. Let me just get my eye back in on that again. Yeah, that's the half stitch. You probably all scream at the camera saying, no, don't do that. And then another half stitch. There. I think that is right. Yeah, I'm going to mark these off whilst I'm here. So yeah, this would probably be a less chatty <laughs> video, <laughs> just purely because of the nature of what I'm doing. Um, but I had so many requests for it that I couldn't ignore the requests any longer and kind of had to do what was requested really. So here we are, we're back in. So there should be two there, two, three full stitch equivalent. So that's one two three yeah and then we're back in so yeah so obviously I'm going to get as much stitching done because what I want to do is come back early December and do like a it'll probably be about my end of year catch up really with you and sort of set my plans for next year sorry floss has just slipped out of the needle and then um I won't, I won't get very much stitching done at all over, over Christmas uh, this year. And then Tony's back overseas just before New Year. And then he's gone for two months, um, which will be pretty nasty. So, you know, I'll get my, get my cross stitch back out. And the other thing I'm going to be focusing on moving forwards is my coaching qualifications. So I think I've mentioned this before to you. I'm working currently on a life coaching certificate and also a diploma in corporate corporate performance coaching which my organization are funding me to do which is brilliant so i've paid for the um life coaching one because obviously it's not specific to the role i do and then i'll um you know that they're funding the one for the sort of the more corporate side of it which is fantastic so i am um, in the process of, of doing both simultaneously and because some of the uh, the kind of the fundamentals of how of the coaching model they use so for those of you who coach or know of coaching they use what they call the grow model so that it, it's quite specific I've, I've kind of come across it in the past in, in another role that I did but I think our industry has moved away from the grow model a little bit so I've had to get my eye back in on that and sort of learn the specifics let me just readjust so so that that's interesting just the way that you set up the questions and sort of formulate the the entire process of the call I just want to make sure I get it right before I move on to do more of it because obviously there's quite a lot of assessments within it as well so I've got to um, sort of record myself coaching somebody um, so that was something I wanted to speak to you about so I'm just going to pause now while I flip over and tie off the end and then re-thread my needle and I'll be right back there we are we're back in the game so yeah so I was just saying about the assessments for the coaching um, I need um, a couple of people to coach virtually and um, what, I, what I'll need to do is record the sessions and, and send them in for assessment. So I think what I'll do, and you know, I may get uptake, I may not, is offer um, a couple of you who would like some life coaching um, a chance to obviously get free coaching from me. So it'll probably be something like um, six sessions hour long free to work on an element of your life where you want to get a little bit more focus um, and then obviously I'll be able to record the interaction that I have with you or a interaction that I have with you and then submit to the 
examiners really um, in order to pass. So that, that's the element where it's probably more challenging because what they recommend, obviously I could ask close friends, I could ask my family, but I, they do recommend you don't coach for obvious reasons, um, you know, people who you're you know, particularly close to. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't always end over well. So, yeah, just just have a, a think, and and if you think you might be interested, um, I mean, obviously you don't have to message anything now. But what I'll do in the new year is come back and and give you some insight into what coaching is and what it isn't, because it's not it's not sort of a, a therapy session or I'm, I'm not going to be sort of delving into your private life and it, it really is very self-driven, solution-focused if it's done properly. Um, so it's just give you a bit of an idea of, of what it'll look like. So I'll come back in the new year and sort of give you an update and if you think you might be interested, we could take it forwards. But obviously in the, you know, the, the virtual world that we're in, we can quite easily do it via... Skype, Teams, whatever you wanted, so I'm, I'm able to see you and connect with you virtually to, to work. So just to sort of keep that in the back of your mind as, as if, if it's something that you might be interested in, in looking into. So I should have 17 of these, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I need to put one more in and then I'll just cross-reference with the pattern. Oh, honestly... It's probably driving you insane, but you can see um, how not straightforward these pieces are. So this should be the start of the first white. Um, and it is, so we've got the green. Yep, yeah, I'm just checking I'm lined up. I'm lined up. So we, we're good. If you've ever seen... Um, the instructions for Chatelaine are, are quite interesting. They, um, I mean, I can show you these without showing you the pattern. Let me just zoom out and show you this. So there's a lot of a lot of writing and a lot of instruction written on on these. So they sort of give you an overview of each of the segments. So they tell you how to stitch all of the stitches. So you've got diagrams here with all of the stitches and how they worked with sort of numbered references so you know if you're doing an Algerian eyelet which way to go. So let's have a look. We've got large on, on Algerian eyelets in this. We've got rice stitches, satin stitches, Dems road stitches, Algerian eyelets, diamond eyelets, um, regular road stitches, Jessica stitches. So there's lots of different um, specialist stitches or speciality stitches within this. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, uh, they're just more. So we've got, yeah, just different type of Jessica stitches and road stitches as well. And then um, the as, as you're building through, they're telling you. So, for example, the, the Tudor Ladies Crown. So you're back stitching all lines with PB36. Um, and then there's just lots of instructions within it. Um, and it breaks it down into each segment. So, for example, here you've got the instructions for the vertical and horizontal flower beds, diagonal veggie beds, the Tudor rose and rose beds. So it really does break it down. So it's not your typical pattern as such. So you do have a pattern which I've actually got, which I can't show you, which I've saved onto my iPad and I'm sort of working it. And each of the symbols on there, obviously in a traditional pattern, represent what you've got. So in here we've got um, regular DMC, Karen Water Lilies, Karen Wildflowers, Dinky Dyes, Gloriana, Needlepoint Silk. Um, we've got Silk Lame, we've got Treasure Bird, we've got Whisper. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's it. Sort of the Whisper Threads and you've got all of the metallics. So you do get your reference of the colours that are needed and obviously that's then built into a pattern. So you can either have it as a paper pattern or you can get a digital PDF which is the one I opted for and, and obviously I can put it on my iPad and sort of cross off as I go. So um, yeah it was just to give you a bit of an idea of how the patterns work because they're not 
your typical sort of cross stitch. Yeah, so you have to sort of bear in mind all of that as you go, which is why um, they tend to be, these are a little bit more tricky to do as a stitch with me. Um, cause you, they're just a little bit more complex. It, it, this is why really what I wanted to do was just pick it's not easy, but a little bit where I'm really doing only cross stitch until I get back into it. And then I will come on as I did initially and, and do some of the specialist stitches with you. And as I said, I'll attach those uploads um, for you so you can go and have a look and sort of see the initial thoughts and journeys of me receiving the Chatelaine packaging and then starting the process. So I'm just stitching on a regular, this is just an even weave and I believe I'm trying to think what count it was. Um, does it say on here what it recommended? I was having a look now. Um, it did recommend a linen, which I did order in the pack with it, but I don't know. I just because it's so sluff, slubby sometimes linen, it it would have just probably thrown me off. So in terms of counting, the counting's bad enough. So I have gone for um, a more even weave, and I think. This is probably, it'll be a 32 count to give me a 16, I would imagine, so I could fit all the beads on comfortably. I can't imagine it being less. Don't think it would have been a 28. I'm pretty sure it was a, a 32. Um, and it's just like a off-white ivory. And I've gone for something plain to make the design stand out. They do say... Oh, they recommend not going for the hand dyed fabrics and keeping it simple. However, I've seen a number of Chatelaines and um, Teresa Little Stitch has done something gorgeous um, and she's used a hand dyed fabric and, and hers looks amazing. I can't remember what it is, um, but it's got swans in. It's lovely. She's well on the way if she's not finished with it. Um, it's It's absolutely lovely and it looks amazing on the on the hand dyed so maybe it's something I would consider doing for next time potentially but pick something like she did that's not overly fussy um, but I just wanted to see what this would look like on, on something more plain and standard so um, yeah it's looking it's looking all right I think let me just have a look at how many stitches I've done oh, I've still got quite a few more to go I think um, before I need to count you put a few more in, I can always back it up if I've done too many. It's not the end of the world, is it? I'd rather be in that position and sort of sit here counting the entire time. But it's um, it's coming together all right. I think, do you know what? I think tonight I'm going to put something decent on the telly and just see how much of this section I can get finished and hopefully not mess it up like I've done on the other side. And then go back and rectify the damage I've done over there so by the time I come back and do my monthly overview it will be almost getting ready for Christmas and I'm going to get my decorations up well in advance of, of Tony coming back um, just so I'm not faffing around with the trees and all of the stuff that I do in the house um, while he's here I just want it to be done I think that's that's quite important um, let me just do a quick check. One, two, three. Oh, marvellous. I was bang on. Right, so this is a half stitch. Um, which should create something like that. It's the half stitches where, you know, I'm, I'm desperately trying to think about which way around I'm going. And then that should be like that. Because this is the bigger part. Because this I think this is where my counting can go off as well. With with this. And then there's another half stitch there. Oh my days. And then we're into regular cross stitch. So let me just check. I've got the equivalent of three full stitches and I haven't miscounted because 
I think that's sometimes do, where I do go off, you know, if I'm not thinking. Right. I think we're good. And then there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these full ones. And we should be about ready. So yeah, I want all the Christmas stuff up. So I'm doing a couple of extra bits for Christmas this year. Then I normally do every every year I add to my extensive um, <laughs> stuff. And I know in the past I have shown um, some of my Christmas decorations and things like that. So I can do that if you want me to. I can sort of give you a, a tour of the house when it's all done for Christmas if you'd like. Um, I do. I wouldn't mind doing sort of a day vlog of stitching um, between now and Christmas or between Christmas and New Year or something like that, like a festive day or something. Let me know if you'd like something like that as well. It's just a little bit different, isn't it? Um, I could always I could always upload, you know, one of those days where you do another stuff and then you'll stitch and then show your progress at the end of the day. I think I've done a couple of those in the past, which have gone down quite well. So I'm happy, you know me, I'm always happy to share elements of my life with you. Um, I have no problem with that. So I do like the vloggy type things. I like to do that. And obviously you saw that with the, the bike ride and stuff. Happy to share stuff like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it should be six before it touches. One, two, three, four, five. That's always nice when that happens. <laughs> We're good, it's positioned in the right place. I just hope everything else is. Um, right, so we're going up over now. Great, so the border for this bed is almost done. I think this is a vegetable. This is definitely a vegetable patch. And, and the red bits on the other side were like beetroots and, and such like. Um, so, um, so that's good. I'm starting to get hungry. I don't know whether or not the camera will be picking up my stomach rumbling, you know. Um, so, I have kept up the bike riding. Um, the weather's gone right off here in the UK now. Not that it was ever good even over the summer this year. It was rubbish. Trust me, I know, because I was trying to get out on the bike. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's dark by the time I finish work during the week. And, obviously, rush hour where I live is just pure madness so you, you you have to have a death wish to go out where I live in the rush hour and I don't have a death wish so I don't go out on an evening after work now so I'm longing for the summer so I can get out and do that again or the brighter we weather and then the weekends I've managed to get out a few weekends post the bike ride but we've had a lot of really high winds here in the UK and I'm, I don't mind a bit of wind to ride in but um, if it's really really blowy I don't, I don't feel overly safe and it is possible to get blown off your bike I did ask one of the coaches whilst I was riding um, back in September if it's possible to get blown off your bike and he looked like me looked at me like I was an idiot <laughs> well, of course it is of course it's possible um, so <laughs> you know often these side winds especially if you're going by a field and there's hedges and all of a sudden you get to like a a gate um, that can be a little bit challenging so where are we here one two three four five six seven eight three four five six seven eight right I've got another three stitches and then we are on the curve back and then I'll just double check my counting again oh, the floss is starting to st uh, twist a little bit let me just take it off the needle and just unravel you just say to do that from time to time. I'll just re re thread. I might have to trim the edge. Oops. I do. It's a little bit fluffy. Oh, I can hear my stomach rumbling. I hope you can't. I don't know what to have for lunch today. What I normally do for, for Stitch With Me is, is I'll do usually some form of full coverage or a section where I've got a load of block work and then I don't have to think I can just stitch and um, and chat away and I just feel like this one because I've had to count every two minutes is um, has felt a little bit disjointed so um, I hope it's um, I hope it's been okay because I don't feel as I've managed to sort of get loads 
talk to you about. So I'm glad um, that at least you had the cycling um, upload in. So yeah, I was saying that I'll definitely keep the bike riding going. Obviously, um, just waiting for days where I don't mind the rain so much as I was saying about the wind. I, I, I don't mind as long as I feel safe on the roads. Um, you know, cycling's difficult enough in the UK. Um, it was quite funny. I do need to tell you this, actually. It, I mean, it's not funny. It's, it's awful. Um, but I'll just um, tie off my loose ends and then I'll come back and, and tell you the, the final story before I finish up. There we are, I'm back in. So I was just saying there about um, the UK and being on the roads. We have in the UK some of the the worst experiences with cars and other road users um, in terms of how they treat cyclists. And it's funny because our coaches who came over front, so they were a global, a couple of US guys, and then the other three we had one from. Was it Norway or Sweden? I can't remember quite where he was from. An Austrian who was obviously Stefan, my coach, and then uh, Martin, who you heard singing, he, he's from Germany. Um, they were saying that obviously the UK has the worst um, reputation for how car drivers and other road users treat cyclists, and obviously they were expecting, um, you, you know, something that probably wasn't that nice. Um, we experience both sides on the ride of, of the road users here in the UK, or North Wales is where we were, and I'm not saying the Welsh drivers are worse than any anywhere else because they're not. Um, but uh, yeah, we experience from a, the good perspective, obviously we were not always followed, but we had a support vehicle that was never really that far away from us, which was all labelled up. Uh, I'm not sure whether I included an image, I think I did, um, with what we were fundraising for and the, what the event was and obviously a little bit of information for, for people who, you know, poor souls had to follow us. And um, we had people passing money through the window to the driver to, to go towards the cars that we were riding for. Um, but on the other hand, we were, I've never been sworn at so much by car drivers ever even through my training I've been in situations where people have not let me pass or given me space and have been obnoxious I had a few hand gestures of car drivers for you know just because they feel like it there's you know I've not actually done anything specific to them but they've obviously just felt the need to get a little bit angry um so um let me just back this up so we were we were sworn at quite a bit on the roads um, one particular incident, I won't tell you what the, the car driver said to him, but what the instructors were trying to do was just allow us to pass and, um, you know, make the turn as there was a, a, a large group of us. And, and obviously from a safety perspective, they wanted to keep the group together because it's better for cars to pass rather than the group be really spread out. So they were trying to keep us all together, allow us to turn in one manoeuvre. So there were waiting for the appropriate times but then if it was clear they'd come out and block the road and if cars came naturally they would slow down and wait well Stefan sort of got into the centre of the road to allow us to make a right hand turn and, and the altercation he had with a, a couple of um, drivers was unbelievable they, they were trying to knock him off his bike by ramming him and opening their car doors onto him I've seen nothing in it in my life the, the language was blue um, so you know it's all my, always my request please be kind to cyclists on the road if, you, if you're driving in the car um, but anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I, I appreciate it's been a little bit disjointed and obviously as I've, I've opened the Chatelaine again and realised <laughs> the error of my ways twice, um, here and up here, I need to go back and, and correct that and find out how on earth I've gone wrong. I'm sure you know that I've tried to correct this previously and still ended up not right. So I need to go and work out what's going wrong here and then obviously make that correction. It's just there where I needed to have left three squares to put in this, um, I think this is like a, a dens row stitch and obviously I've not left the box big enough so whether or not I can pass it over these three stitches 
think I probably can. I just need to make sure that the rest of it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue to make some progress on this. And then I may be back between now and Christmas. Uh, sorry, <laughs> between now and the 3rd of December. Possibly, I don't know. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I want to get as much stitching in as I possibly can and hopefully come back prior to then and show you um, some progress reports alongside my coaching course and really get into grips with that. I want to get an entire module through in the next four weeks. So um, I'm going to have to spend a bit of time with that on an evening and a weekend as well. So it's going to be busy obviously with preparations for Christmas as well. So um, I'll try and get as much stitching in as I possibly can. So I do hope you've enjoyed this. As I said, I'll put those two other uploads in for you if you've not seen them already. Um, so if you're thinking of doing a Chatelaine, 100% go for it. They are lovely. And now I've got this back out, I'm gonna continue to work on it over the next few nights and see how much progress I can make. So I will see you in a few weeks time thank you so much once again for all of the support um, for the bike ride um, you're amazing thank you take care lots of love bye